Hi, it's Kim, and welcome to the channel today. We are going to show you the making of our giant Hypertufa. I had so many problems, but I'd had this particular mold for such a long time, and I so wanted to have another huge Hypertufa that I had had previously at my old house, so big that we couldn't move. There's a post back on the blog about that. But you can see it's this giant rubber, I guess, watering trough or feeding trough for animals. We got it at a tractor supply store and I've been wanting to use that. It is really, really big. It's a 40 gallon. It does say so in the bottom of the container, but that's what my ambitions are to make the Hypertufo today. We're putting in all of our dry ingredients together and we did use the screen and have sifted have sifted the peat moss so we'll try not to have huge particles but we're getting all the dry mixed mixed together all right one more we'll have two more okay and in this instance we are mixing since i'm mixing such a huge container we're doing four gallons of cement three gallons of vermiculite <laughs> and three gallons of peat moss. We're making this a joint effort today so everybody's helping. Ready? We're getting ready to make our giant Hypertufa, another T-Rex. We put our water in the cement mixer. We've got all of our dry ingredients mixed together over here. And this is our form that we're gonna use. Right now we're mixing this up. <laughs> okay, now. I'm going to turn this on and we're going to start filling it in. Okay. Okay, what I'm going to do over here in my mixer is turn it on and let the water start to slosh. And then we're going to put the dry ingredients in as it mixes. So we mixed the entire amount of our dry ingredients into the mixer. I think at one point we put a little too much water in there. It looked like we had more than enough. I jumped in and made a few extra bowls while they filled up the bottom of this. Now during this time is when we put the hardware cloth. I made a separate movie about that, separate video I should say, and so you can check that out. I'll note it here in the top corner. But by the time we got the hardware filled in, hardware cloth filled in, I realized we didn't have enough to do the sides at all. We had no more cement, so we just had to finish out the bottom and let it set and cure and go buy more cement. So we didn't resume operations until the following day. So basically the fault was adding a little too much water and not planning out the bowls correctly. When we were all ready, I resumed making. My husband was there to help me this time. I'm speeding it up because it took us forever. Um, the bottom was uh, rock-like, so it had started to set real well. 
So we went ahead just to build the sides. They almost look like the same color here in the um, video, so I think we matched it pretty well. It does have some black uh, cement mix dye into it. Um, you can see where I speed it up, you can see the sides start to shape and form. It wasn't as high as I had originally planned to make it, but it was so difficult with the slumping that was occurring that the fact that we could get them up this high felt like it was going to have to be adequate whether that's where I wanted to stop or not. The next time we'd have to be more, very much more careful in the amount of water we put in it. But that's just experience. I've got this cut to ribbons because I had even forgot I was filming and a lot of it is just my back and my backside doing the uh, molding. And I'm sure you don't want to see that. Now we are continuing, my husband and I, with our new mixture, trying to get the sides to not slump as bad, but unfortunately with too much water added, there's not much you can do. So we are continuing to press the sides up and try to help as much as we can. Now we decided we've got it as good as we can do, so we're trying to find some kind of an insert that we can put in, but nothing seems to be the right shape without actually distorting the pot itself. I don't mind if it's distorted underneath the soil, but I don't want the sides to be distorted. I want them to remain in a nice big oval. So it I don't know, I just came to the conclusion that I wouldn't try to build such a huge one next time. I'll just stick with these large tubs that I have and make my larger hypertufas, not this gigantic one that is just almost not handleable. Now every time we pushed in one of those inserts and tried to get it to look like it would shape right, it uh, kind of mash down little angles in the sides and we'd have to go back and repair that area. So that just added to the extra work and this one seemed to become such a joy to put together. I did have very very lot of video recorded that I've edited down and speeded up and as I said before there are times when I forgot I was even filming because it was just so frustrating and there wasn't anything we could do about that slump. That's one of the major drawbacks when you're mixing and you don't have a precise amount. But always be careful with your water. But we fold down our plastic. That's usually why I put the liner in. And then it became a jigsaw puzzle, trying to find something that would hold up the sides. So we tried various amounts of uh, molds and weed buckets that I have that I use in the garden, just trying to get some kind of circular end. And of course, I didn't have matching of anything. So it became sort of a mismatch of what to put together. Then once we found two that seemed to keep the shape of the, the ends, we thought that we would just try boards to prop up the sides. Just kind of wedge in a little, um, I don't even know what you would call that, just sort of a brace board to hold it up on each side. Now it did end up making an indent in that side, but it's hidden underneath the soil, so it's not going to be a real big problem. And then we, again, tried to fit the uh, buckets back down in and still accommodate the boards that we would got on the middle brace. So overall, yeah, we're talking about a nightmare here. But at least we finally got it uh, straightened out. My husband's the, you know, he sees that spatially. I'm not good at that kind of stuff. So he was the major portion who could get this um, jigsaw puzzle figured out. But we got everything wedged in like we wanted it and felt that this would probably dry like we needed it. So thank God it was on this wagon. We decided to just to go ahead and 
pull it over into the other side of the basement, let it cure over there so I can get a lot of all this mess cleaned up that I have created. And that was the finishing of this giant hypertufa that I did make. So I'm going to end the video here and I will make another video of the setup and planting of this hypertufa. Believe me, it was a nightmare getting that flimsy plastic off.